Right, hi there YouTube and thanks very much for joining me. Now, this is a nightly video that I'm doing on how to install Black Arch Linux. Now, this is a penetration testing distribution for ethical hackers and it's similar to Parrot OS and Kali Linux but a little bit different in terms of how we install and uh, there's a whole sweet load of tools that come with it. Now, unlike a lot of the other YouTube channels, I'm going to be installing this on a UEFI slash EFI based system. Now, a lot of the other YouTubers out there have done this on either VMware or some other virtual machine or on systems that aren't quite like that. So this one's a little bit different, and you might want to factor that one in when it comes to how to install. But I'm going to show you the easy way on how to get this done on a laptop. So, without further ado, let's run over onto a bench and let's take a look at what we got. Be strong. Be strong. Okay, for the purposes of this video, this already assumes that you have a pre-written USB thumb drive of at least 32 gig in size. You're going to need that um, because the actual download file is massive for this, for the full offline installation. It actually comes in at 22 gigabytes as of the current upload day and time. So what we're going to go ahead and do, first of all, is we're going to insert this into our laptop and then go ahead and power on. We're going to need to go straight into the BIOS just to make sure that all of our settings are correct. So we'll do that by pressing either F2 or Delete and we're straight in. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see exactly what's going on. Okay, now... We are going to want to go to our boot menu, and as we see, it is indeed UEFI. Uh, I could dick around changing all of that, but I'm not going to bother. And as I said in the intro, we're going to be installing this on a UEFI system. A little bit more tricky, but I'm sure we'll get there. Um, so you'll just have to bear with me if I make some mistakes along the way. So we're happy that everything is there, so we can just save changes and exit. And let's enter again. We'll just wait for this guy to kind of boot into our live environment with a little bit of help. So we're going to want the second option on that one. Uh, so Black Arch Linux Full Medium. And that's with UEFI. Just press enter, and that should take us into a live environment. Now, from there on, we're going to want to open up a terminal, and I'll show you something actually on how to maximize that terminal, which is kind of pretty cool. So, we'll just give this a moment, uh, ignore all of these uh, operand errors that are thrown, that won't affect anything at this stage anyway. But as I said, we'll um, show you something that's pretty cool as well. Let's just give this a moment to get onto the the environment. Okay, now by default, the user is root. Press enter and the password is B-L-A-C-K-A-R-C-H and enter. Okay, so we've got our desktop. Now, I might well elect to use a mouse on this one, just purely because it's going to be easier. Okay, so we're going to right click and we're going to open up a green terminal. Right. Now on that green terminal, we're going to want to press start X. 
and that should maximize that like so and then what we're going to want to do is type in uh, black arch Linux no sorry black art black arch dash install let's dash install enter we're going to want the second option on this one and we're going to want that verbose so that's option two again we need to set our locale now so that's option one going to just press enter on that and now we need to set our key map so that's option one and then uk for me at least press enter set the host name we'll just call that black arch and enter again and we need to choose a device so we're going to say sda on that one and then enter you have to type that in by the way Okay, do we want to install it with Windows or something else? No. So that's N. Then enter. Create partitions with CF disks root and boot optional swap. So yes, we do. So that's Y on the keyboard, followed by enter. Start with in memory zeroed partition table. Okay, so basically what that's going to do is that's going to zero our hard drive ready for install but to begin with what will happen is it's going to store the partition table in the ram so we're going to say yes to that so just press y and then enter things start getting a little bit tricky now because we have options either gpt dos sgi or sun well, we want DOS, so we're just going to press enter for that. Okay, and we have our free space up here starting blocks, end blocks, sectors on the hard drive, and the size of the drive, which is 256 gig, which is more than enough. So what we're going to do, first of all, is where it says free space, we're just going to press enter. Okay. And then down here, we're going to get rid of all of that. And I'm going to type in 500 and then a capital M for Mike. That looks like that. And then we'll go ahead and press enter. Okay, that's done that. And we need to set that as primary. So we'll just do that. And we want to go into the type. So we'll just scroll over once. Hit enter, and we want that, ideally, uh, where was it? It was down the bottom, as EFI. So it's option EF. And then press enter, and we want to make that bootable. So we scroll to the left on the arrow keys, and we press enter again. And that now gives us an asterisk here that's just made our primary partition the first option on sda1 as bootable now what we'll do is using the arrow keys we're going to go down to free space press enter and now i'm going to create a swap file so partition size on this one is going to go to about a gig so it's just one and then capital g for golf and then i'm going to press enter now again, we want that as a primary, 
And then what I'm going to do is where it says type, I'm going to go to that, press enter. And I'm going to want that as ideally some sort of Linux uh, swap petition. So it's Linux swap slash Solaris, which is option 82 on there. And then I'm going to press enter. And that one is also done. So we'll, using the arrow keys, we're going to go down again. And then we're going to say enter again. And we don't need to touch petition size on here. So we're just going to simply say enter. Like so. That's primary. Like so. And a type on this one. So we'll go over to where it's type again, press enter, and we are going to want that set as option 83, which is already on Linux. So just press enter. And you should end up with something that looks like that. Right? Now what we're going to want to do is go ahead and write these changes. So we scroll over to where it says write using the arrow keys as always. No, not dump, we want write, press enter, and then are you sure you want to write the petition table to the disk? So we're going to type in yes, Y-E-S, and then press enter. Okay, and that should have done it. And as we see in the bottom here, the petition table has been altered. So what we can go ahead and do is scroll over to quit, and we are ready. So we can now go ahead and say full encrypted root, yes or no. Well, I'm planning on using this as a penetration testing machine. So actually, I am going to encrypt this, or am I? Am I? No, I'm not, actually. Uh, not on this one. So I'm just going to hit no. That's N. I was thinking about it, but nah. So we'll go ahead and press enter. So it's not encrypted. Now this is where you've got to be careful with typing. Because things can get kind of screwed up a little bit easily if you're not careful. So the boot petition... Well, we already know where that is. That's the top one here on EFI. So what we need to do is type in what we see there in green down here. So it's slash DEV slash SDA1 and then press enter. All right. Now choose a file system to use. Um, by default is ext4, well I'm going to type ext4 and then press enter. Right, now it wants a root petition. Right, now this is where we are going to want our um, root files. So this is essentially everything that's going to be on the operative system. So we're going to want SDA3. So we're going to type in slash DEV slash SDA3 and then enter. And again, it's EXT4. So we'll type that in and then press enter. And now for the swap petition, which we defined as SDA2. So it's a little bit awkward with this. You've got to watch out because you can get tripped up with it. So we'll just type in slash DEV slash SDA2 and followed by enter. Uh, is the partition table correct? Looks it. Looks it to me. So we'll just press yes, Y for yes, and then enter. Uh, formatting partitions, are you sure? No crying afterwards. So we'll just press yes with that. And it'll go ahead and format. 
Now this will take a fair while, so you'll probably want to get a drink of choice. So, yeah. We'll just leave this to do its thing. Hmm. We will indeed. But most of the heavy work now is done. So we just have to grab a coffee and pop shells. Well, I'm grabbing Hennessy, actually. And still pop shells. So we'll just give this a while. And there we go. So it can take a while, but there's an SSD drive in this with 8 gig RAM on an i3 processor, so it shouldn't take a great deal of time. We'll see. <laughs> Real-time video, so you know that it's all true, as always. Basically, we got to get to 60 gig. Because essentially this process is taking everything off that flash drive and dumping it onto our operating system. But it is copying quite quickly. Quite quickly. Could be faster. Who knows, if this works the way that I want it to, I'll go ahead and install it on my other machine. And that really will run quickly. So it's copied over just under 5 gig. Six gig. So it's about ten percent. Most of the hard work now is done. So this is just a case of we got to write the operating system to the necessary parts of the disk. And then we got to configure the, I think it's like the bootloader. I think so. Something like that. Okay, it's 10 gigabyte copied. Okay, we're nearly at 12. 
real time video this one I should have actually done it live but never mind I'm showing you it in full because there might well be tutorials out there which are not quite correct and they might be a little bit clickbaity but at least you know with this one it's the correct tutorial for an EFI system anyway. We've just got to be patient. So we're 15 gig. About quarter of the way. Feel free to go ahead and get a drink of your choice as well while this is going. It may take a while. Or feel free to skip ahead if you have to. Okay, we're nearly 20 gigabyte done. So that takes us to about a third of the way. I do expect these numbers here to improve somewhat. We can zoom in on this a little bit, I think. Twenty two gig. That's the size of the download that's been copied. Just got to hope that my phone doesn't run out of memory. That would be a shame.
25 gig done. It's taken us to nearly the halfway point. Time to keep on enjoying a good drink. Because that's nearly halfway. And we're approximately halfway into the install. Real-time video. It's all in real time. No fakery here. Okay, it's 35 gig done. And everything's looking nominal.
4K when almost at 40 gig. So it's not too bad. Just another 20 to go. Right there. Okay, that's 45 gigabyte done. Forty eight. Okay, we're at the 50 gigabyte completion uh, there, so just another 10 gigabyte to go. And everything's looking pretty nominal. It's all looking good. Hoping that these numbers here would have picked up somewhat, but they haven't.
and that's 55 gigabyte complete. Okay, we're in the final sort of couple of gigabytes now. So we're at 59 gigabytes done. Sixty. Probably about 63 gigabytes in size. So it's massive. This is what's copied across. Over 2,800 tools. Okay, installation's done. Ignore the missing firmware for the time being. We'll have to address that at a later time. Set password for the root account. Well, I'm just going to call that root backwards. So that's T O O R. And the same again. Set up a normal user account, yes or no. So I'm going to say yes. Enter. I'm just going to call it what I usually do hacker. And enter. A new password for that, which should just be Tor. And it's just setting up the Grub Bootloader, which is done. Default UTC or choose other time zone. So we're going to type Wi-Fi, yes. I'm here in the UK, so I'm going to say GMT. Enter. 
And that's pretty much it done. Awesome. So what we can now do, wait a few minutes or wait a few seconds before removing the flash drive, which is here. We can just simply set that guy off to one side and we're going to say reboot now or possibly restart now or we'll just simply say exit and we'll back out and we'll just hard power it off actually followed by a repower on. This should be done. The flash drive is here. We can save and exit that. Not sure why it went back to the BIOS there. Hmm. Why has it done that? That's strange. Let me just pause one second. Okay, so we're back after that brief pause. And I do apologise for that. It turned out that what I had to do was start an easy flash on the system BIOS, launch CSM, and yeah, I had to mess around with boot override. But it looks like now that we're back in business. So let's save changes and exit again, and let's see what we get now. But yeah, it was rather odd. And there we have it. So, as we see, just to recap on things, the flash drive is here. So we can now boot Black Arch Linux. Impressive. I'll give that one a thumbs up. Log in as hacker and root backwards and we are in baby we are in so after a little bit of fannying around with the system BIOS we've managed to configure everything and get it all up and running And all of our tools are indeed there. Every single one of them. <coughs> so what we can do is proceed to close out then. So YouTube, there we have it. That was the install of Black Arch Linux. Um, and it was a little bit shaky uh, in terms of the install, but we got there in the end. Anywho, that pretty much brings us to the end of the video for today and for this evening. So I need to really uh, get some rest because I'm absolutely shattered and I've got busy, busy day tomorrow. But I have to thank all of you guys um, for subscribing, for the likes, the comments. It all means the world to me and hopefully you enjoyed that video, even if it was a little bit long. And of course, I'm wishing you all the very best for the new year. And just a reminder, because this is an ethical hacking video, please do keep it all ethical and legitimate. I look forward to seeing you soon. I look forward to reading all your comments. And until then, I'll catch you in the next one.